Well, it has been quite a while since I have done an F1 build and to complete the mod entirely, and not only because of the technical difficulties of trying to add extra things into BeamNG that are not normal, but also partly because the body was not only geometrically boring to look at, to be honest, but also technically challenging to make. This was actually one of the most, like, you know, nah, nah, straight up. This was the most difficult body I've ever made for automation. How is something so geometrically just mundane looking? Why, why did that stump me so much? Anyway, we've now got it in automation, and it is set for a 1976 year for a 1978 release. And we have two versions. We have the normal, and we have the B variant. And of course, we're making the fan car today. If you are unaware of said fan car, in 1978, for one race only, did a car come in with fans to aid downforce. And it was actually extremely effective, but also it was always against the rules. And the reason why it never actually saw any more races, they could have tried to wiggle their way through it, calling the fan a calling thing and not actually to do with downforce because you can't have movable downforce items. That is why it was actually against the rules, even though they were arguing against it. I'll give you one guess why. It's the same thing as always. Politics. That's right, the person that led the team wanted to be in charge of the FIA, and he made an agreement- oh, well, like, there was an agreement saying, oh, you know what, no, we'll just undo this thing that we put a lot of money into, Gordon Murray and all those sorts of people put so much effort into, which is now making the new Gordon Murray T50 vehicle. And it comes across as the goodness of the heart that the owner of the team just said, okay, sure, we'll get rid of it. But wouldn't you know it, the next year, he was in charge of the FIA, yeah, like, <laughs> coincidences sure but all of that aside today we are making this fan car and it's going to be quite exciting the first thing we're going to do is decide what to make this chassis and panels out of we have an aluminium alloy monocoque featuring a trapezoidal which is what triangles oh no no not triangles uh, cross section okay cool yeah great all right aluminium the rest of it i'm guessing is fiberglass because if we scroll up and have a look at the picture you see that this is all really quite cruddy which is very indicative of fiberglass though it could just be punched metal i don't know we're just gonna go for now though with oh we well oh no we don't actually have aluminium as an option if we go up a little bit there we go glued aluminium unfortunately the best way to gonna be able to do it right now we might actually have to switch over to carbon fiber to get the lightness that the thing actually had i would like to try to stay realistic but the weight is more important for the feel in bmng luckily this number will be a little bit easier to reach than most because it is called overweight and yes it is 625 kilograms which is about 50 kilograms more than base and almost no car really went much over this so to be 50 kilos over this thing was really relying on that downforce because otherwise this thing would have absolutely failed it also comes with push rod i mean it's technically pull rod suspension but we'll give it push rod for now the thing also comes with a flat 12 but unfortunately i only have flat six as an option rather interestingly this alfa romeo flat 12 was very, very incredibly similar to the Ferrari flat 12 of the day. The number of 500 horsepower is a little too round for me, but we'll give it a try anyway. We do have a born stroke though, it's 77 by 53.9. And we're gonna go with a V12 now and we'll uh, change this to a flat engine later. Unfortunately, we can't make the stroke low enough. So what we're gonna do is instead go over to here and bring this number down. Though I'm seeing that this is also over three liters and three liters is the uh, amount allowed. Did they cheat? Let's do some maths here. Oh, would you look at this? This has a conflicting number. 53.6 millimeters. Luckily we can accommodate and 2996. Okay, this was wrong. This sort of misinformation on old F1 cars is part of the challenge that makes these cars so hard to make. Ah. But 
if you do appreciate it, maybe hit that like button and subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Okay, yeah, let's move on. Oh dear. Uh, I hate, I hate pleading. But anyway, you get the idea. This engine is too new. Let's go ahead and set that to be much older. It's four valve double over cam, compression ratio of somewhere between 11 and 12. So I think we'll just go 11 to one to start with. Has mechanical fuel injection, my favorite. Probably got some sort of like really special fuel, though probably not ethanol, but apparently we can only go from regular to 130. What about leaded? What can we go in there? Oh, there we go. We go ab gas, which is probably actually what they ran. Probably has a really high RPM limit. And then some race exhaust. Now the magic number is 380. Oh, okay. This one is actually quoting a higher number than the incorrect website. And since this one has proven to be wrong so far, including also the weight is off, we're just going to probably mostly ignore this website and go with 387 kilowatts, which shouldn't actually be too hard to do. Naturally aspirated engines are very powerful at the moment in automation. And this power number also comes right at the tippy top of our rev limit possibilities. It seems unfortunately the rev band we have is not quite where we wanted, but hey, it's close enough. Considering they can't even get their facts straight between all of these websites of which there has been multiple of them. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that they're probably not accurate numbers anyway. So this is maybe more of an approximation anyway. I wonder what this sounds like. Oh my god, my ears are bleeding. Yeah, it sounds like automation garbage. Please devs, fix the audio for V12s. They are so bad. But here we go. We've got our car and we are ready to start putting things in. I also just realized I didn't do the chassis right, but maybe I'll fix that before I send it out to you guys. Seems we have a six-speed gearbox. Easy to do. No word on the diff. So I actually heard that a lot of these were open. So... We'll just go with open for now and hope that it isn't garbage. Since the tires were good here, they're not Michelin, so I think we're still rocking ourselves some cross plies. Uh, it, it took a while. It took into the 80s to fully convert everybody. Now to get the dimensions. Unfortunately, it seems that this website has no information on tires. So seemingly my only option is to measure things. 195s on the front, which I seemingly can't get. So we're going to have to do our old trick of making the head heavier tires, narrower, thinner, I mean. So make it really big until we can get 195s. This gives us such heavy tires. And then for the rears, oh, this is gonna be huge. We have 350s approximately. Now we are keeping in mind that we are not measuring the width of the tire as it seems that automation's way of calculating things is to measure the width of the wheel. So tires and wheels are a little bit different from what they would be in real life. First, let's get the diameter where we want it to be. 660, not too hard. Unfortunately that only allows us to go up to 195s as well. So yeah, we're gonna have to make this much bigger and bring it back down. Oh no. Oh no, I didn't allow the tires to be big enough. Oh, I'm, all right, well, time to go fix this. This is really gonna blow out the weight of this vehicle. Let's set the maximum wheel diameter to something like 95, which will uh, convert to be 950 diameter. I. Yeah, maybe? You know what, let's just set that to 100. So now along with fixing the tires to be bigger, also the chassis is now right. Those are some big chunkersy tires. Let's go ahead and hide the chassis. Just to let people know, you hide the chassis here, not over here. One works in BMG and the other doesn't. Carbon brakes? Interesting. Doesn't say carbon ceramics, just says carbon brakes. So it's probably more like a carbon pad than a carbon disc. Combined carbon composite brake pads with steel disc. I thought so. So mm, we're just gonna go with vented for now because they are still steel. Now, because we're not generating a whole lot of downforce with this, we're just gonna go with no under tray, which will increase the drag because these bodies did create a lot of drag. And instead we're going to use our own trickery to add downforce. Apparently the brakes are suffering from severe brake fade. The car has severe issues with wheel spin. Apparently this thing wants to go 417 kilometers an hour, but we are going to add a bunch of downforce. Now, this sort of downforce here doesn't really create that much drag. Just the body in general is what creates a lot of drag. First, what we're gonna do though is make our tires uh, the right diameter. So if you wanna know how I do this little trick, first we grab ourselves the one meter roller, place it somewhere flat, get this lined up into the center of the wheel. We can even cheat a little bit because we could just make this super fat and wide, then drag the center into the center of the wheel. Now the diameter of this is meant to be 
660, which if we divide that by two, we'll get the radius, which is 330. So now all we need to do is go into here, go into tires and change the tire diameter until we get to the desired size, which is right about there, 330. Because uh, millimeters to centimeters, you just times one by 10. And perfecto, perfecto, perfecto mundo is what I'm trying to articulate. Now with the front tires done as well, we might go in and have a little bit of a fiddle with things. For instance, there is a lot of tire wall stretch. We want to drag out the tire width to be about 445, which is somewhere around here. And then I think, what do tires look like on this thing? There's a little bit of bulge. Yeah, no, not too much. I think that's an acceptable amount. We'll just go ahead and make that tire width back in a little bit. And I think, I think that's a fairly good look. Now let's do the same to the fronts. God, there's a lot of work going into just getting these tires just right. Lots of maths, lots of calculations. Here comes the next challenge. And it's really hard to see. There is not many good pictures of this whatsoever. The stationary BT46B. Uh, you barely see the wheels, but they are actually different wheels, which is gonna be a little bit annoying. We're just gonna pick one though. Annoyingly, the best renditions, uh, renders that we have are either toy cars, which are very different from what I've seen elsewhere, and drawn images. Oh, the documentation here is a real failure. I wonder if there's a video of it. Yeah, there's lots of videos, but this is like the best image. <laughs> Why can't we just have a good image of the wheels, please? All right, fine. We'll just go with something kind of generic. I think this looks accurate enough. I don't know, man. It's, it's, oh, this is, this is an issue. You know what, let's actually give this thing paint. First the base red paint, then the very dark blue. Looks like it already. Now we're talking. We've also got an extra little color section here for the tail section, and we can make this more or less transparent because that is the window section. I think we're gonna put it something like that which really does help with visibility. We will turn this to be double-sided and beam edgy at some point though. As for the engine, yeah, the engine will be swapped out eventually. Now let's start working on downforce. We have a fairly flat element front wing here, which is super easy to replicate, especially with mods. And how far out does this come? Uh, it's a little bit vague. What does it say here? It says here it's mostly in line with the front tire, which is gonna be pretty easy to do. And by the looks of it, it's a multi-element wing. So to aid in a little bit of downforce, we are actually going to replicate it being a multi-element wing. We also have this weird air intake sort of thing, so that we can do, because we have those already. Luckily, somebody's already made this into a mod, which makes our life so much easier. God, this thing is ginormous. It comes right up into the middle of the vision of the driver. Oh my goodness. What is this? Oh, it's this is ridiculous. It's, it's coming together slowly, but surely. We do have some extra vents down the front as well. Seemingly on all of these versions, it's kind of like a triangular sort of thing. It's really hard to tell exactly what it is, and it's also going to be quite tricky to do as well. This is turning out to be really annoying to me, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. There we go. Okay. That took quite some time to get right. Next. Uh, some more of this... Para... Palm... Palmalat... What is Palmalat? It's a food company, and they make milk. Yes. The first thing I think of when I'm thinking about F1. Milk. Well, I suppose I'm not one to judge, so let's go ahead and duplicate this. And plop you into place. Oh my god, Palmalat is also... How much milk do they pour on this thing? All right, fine. Another one, please. Oh my god. Oh, wait, we haven't even gotten to the rear wing yet. So many Palmalat signs that we don't even know what we're doing with ourselves anymore. So the rear wing also looks to be multi-element. It seems to be also just above the rear tire. So let's go put that rear wing in place. Seems to start about behind the midpoint of the tire. Looks about there and not a much above. So let's bring it down to about here. And I think the element part of this is all done. Now where'd the Palmalat sign go? Yeah, could need the most important part, the Palmalat sign. All right. 
Now to do the side signs, which even though this is Brabham, they do use an Alfa Romeo engine, so we're going to use Alfa Romeo stickers. Not too hard. We got lots of things for this. Good. Coming together. And then we also have... Oh my god. Is that more Parmalat? <laughs> oh, come on. Why so much milk? I'm lactose intolerant. Come on. Just being in the presence of this car is going to make me fart all the time. All right. Now I think it's just to do some ventilation on top. First, we have this weird oil cooler thing. That should be rather simple. Grab a vent and stick it on there. It's the same on both of these. So yeah, it doesn't go quite to the back there. I think, you know what? That looks pretty good. Then we've also got a vent here, which starts right at the back of this little uh, rollover protection sort of area that goes to about midway through that. Let's grab another one of these and we'll make this the right color. Unfortunately, there's like a really bright light, which doesn't really exist in this world. But what it does is it makes it really hard to see sometimes what you're doing. That looks fine enough, I suppose. And then we got this very special sort of thing here and I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I think what I might do is one make this a little bit narrower <laughs> Whoops, and then we'll just put a big cut out here and then we'll fill it back in my god The effort this is taking I don't think I've ever spent so long making one of these cars This is like starting to get really really detailed got a corner cut off and a corner cut off not too hard to do if I do say so myself. Now we just got slats that run the other way from the center backwards and outwards. So we'll just grab these I reckon and just change their ratio. Easy. How many slats are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then kind of a corner. Three, four, five. Six. Yeah, you know what? Close enough. And then just a flat mesh underneath. So we'll get back to here. We'll duplicate this, turn that into a no cutout. It really looks like a material more than a mesh. It's very weird. Go with that, that works, and make it a bit bigger. And I think we have our mesh area back here. I think that, that looks pretty good. I think I've done a faithful enough job filling that out. I just realized I self-praised maybe a little too much. A weird sort of like a quad exhaust. And yeah, the exhaust is doing strange stuff. And then we've got a bit of a odd cutout. So we'll grab this, I reckon, and we'll stretch that into the shape that we want. Um, I don't like that this is poking through, but I suppose there's not really anything we can do. I suppose we could try shortening it up. Oh, that does a little bit of stuff to help fix the issue we've got. But now that'll do, even though we can see through <sighs> Whatever. Uh, the exhaust are poking. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Once again, there's not a whole lot we can do. I think that's it for that. Now we got the rear fan area. Now this is well documented. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fins. Great. It's uneven. That means I have to do like jump, like. Mm. I, w I wish it had been symmetrical. First, we'll start with this center shroud bit. We could probably use just a vent for that. And then I think for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna use something like this, stretch and squish it into the position that we want it to be. And now we're just gonna duplicate and set this around. Oh, that is <laughs> pretty hideous. But it does the trick, I think, and we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll just leave that for now. Then it's got the fan on the inside, but we could deal with that later. When making the model, I never noticed that I had this weird lip back here. It's not even here on this one. All right, well, that's optional, so we'll just leave it off, I suppose. And then, oh my god. More Parmalat! Okay. Filled with milk. This shows a little bit of writing, though I can barely make it out. This shows different writing. Once again, can't make it out. It says something. So I, I don't know what it's meant to say. Let's just make something up, I suppose, and just move on. And I think that will do a good job. Then a little bit of a weird triangular sort of badge thing. Let's see if we've got something that fits. You know, the Porsche badge looks similar, but there's also whatever Puff Duck is. We'll, we'll go with Puff Duck. Now, aerodynamics say we will do, and less than 100 kilos of downfalls, that's about right. Uh, we're gonna add a little bit more downfalls to the rear than the front, so that's all good. As for the drivetrain, it says we're gonna lose a little bit of speed, and that's all good. Wheel spin is now down. Brakes are probably suffering from a lot of brake fade. So let's uh, go ahead and just give this a lot more brake force. So that's now down to slight brake fade. <laughs> And let's move on. What does the test track reckon we'll do right about now? Currently the air downforce is kind of all scuffed. 
and oh! it's really goddamn loud to scare the poop out of me. But yeah, we got one minute 59. Not, not bad, not bad for a car with like very little downforce. IRL, yeah, that's uh, doing pretty well so far. So let's go ahead and export a version of it. Do love those force unbreakable fixtures. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to make a flat 12 version. So what we're gonna do is we're going to clone the one that we just made. We're gonna call this like uh, flat Ness Everdeen. That'll do, I suppose. Turn it into a flat six, which doesn't matter what the power is because we'll fix that in a second. We'll get rid of that part of the name and now we will export it again. All good. Open up some beam and genus. Open up our car. Let's go ahead and unpack our car. Hold on, no, that's the V12 version. We don't need that. What we are to unpack is the normal version of it. This is what we like to see. Now, let's open up the V12 version and we're gonna grab all of the engines engine stuff. So we're gonna grab engine, engine structure, engine internals, and just drag it out across in here, replace that, all good. So we're gonna go from about 200 kilowatts to having, control R, nearly 400 kilowatts, which is about right, it was 380 something. And guess what? Sounds like garbage. All this effort. And it sounds so bad oh you know what also we're meant to actually drag the audio files over as well i think what we're gonna do is reduce the volume of this thing i wonder if just turning this to zero will work got our volume hit Control r and it is a little bit quieter good okay for a while this wasn't actually working i also realized i had the audio down so oh my god this thing is just atrocious let's go like minus 10. Like, oh my god, I hate this. Um, it's already deafening me. And it's at idle. I mean, it's... It, it's still really loud. Let's go ahead and maybe make this minus 20? I think it goes from 30 to minus 30, so I think minus 20 should be fine. Yeah, alright. That's a little bit more acceptable. The engine pops are a lot louder than it, so I, th I think it'll be fine. She'll be right, mate. Now to do the piece de resistance. We are going to install our little trick bit, which is gonna add downforce. Now I made this before in another car, so we're gonna have to find it and see if we can still use it because there's been many updates. Fan test. Uh, we've got some lure stuff in here. That's a Jato lure, good, that's what we want. So if we drag that in there. Before we go too far, I did actually get some help from Groundhog 2010. Uh, they're in my Discord if you ever want to hit them up or anything like that. They were instrumental in making this work. This is actually what it's meant to do. So see what happens? So I floor it and... Oh, uh, hold on. Am I meant to... Uh, additional modify... Ah, there we go. Fan thrust. That's what we're missing. We floor that and then... Nope, nothing's happening. I had this all working before. Oh my god, why? Oh, I figured it out. What I was meant to do is turn Jato on. Uh, yeah, uh, I thought I got around having that issue, but you can see that the vehicle does move when you rev the engine quite a bit. So now if we go over to this car and make sure that it has fan thrust applied, we can now go in, make sure that's enabled, which is infinite, and look at that. Much, much better. Does flex the body considerably, as you can see. Mmm. Well, that's, that's a lot of body flex. Goodness gracious. We, we can get rid of you now. We, you are, you've done, you filled your purpose, and now we've got this one that we need here. Is that showing the wrong, that's showing the wrong engine model. Great. You know what, we'll fix that later. For now, I think, wait, is that meant to be blue? I think that's meant to be, wait, what is that? Oh, okay, well, that's something to fix as well. But we now have thrusty downforce. And it does add quite a lot of traction. We just have to kind of get it lined up a little bit so we don't understeer or oversteer and stuff like that. The other thing we're going to do is... We're going to put in the jiggle fix and fix the collision mesh, which is pretty ugly. My goodness, this has been many, many hours later. We've got a decent collision mesh, but we do have now a good tune. I spent a lot of time setting up this tune and we're gonna now try it out and you have to click this even though nothing changes. You can see the body go down. Yes. So now 
We give it a bit of a try around here. I'm not going to break out the rig for this thing because I think this uh, vehicle works perfectly as is. I would like to break out the steering rig, but it is like 5 a.m. I am well past the end of my day. I really should wind this up and I don't want to spend like 15 minutes setting up a race rig. You know, I think we're pretty good. Oh, okay. Yeah, we might move that thrust a little bit forwards. And I set up a special thing to move that forward. So the more negative this is, sorry, the other way around, the more it applies to the front. So let's go like half a meter forwards. That's pretty far forwards. Now we're going to move across and we're going to set up a time trial. The time we're hoping to beat is from the Lotus 78. I feel that that one might do a little bit better because I've not spent quite as much time on this vehicle. But 1 minute 44 is the time we're going for. Three, two, wait, wait, are we, yeah, time trial is going. Yeah, good, there's the time. All right, let's push. I'm going to go full sweat mode for this. Ah, oh, well, let's try that again. Uh, let's try that again. Bugger. Bugger. Damn it. But you know what they say, a sixth time's a charm. And I know that does sound pretty garbage, I have to give it six tries, but it actually breaks quite well. Like, look at this, breaking so quickly, even with a little bit of body jiggle, and even though this thing is scraping the heck out of the bottom of the vehicle, I feel that like the braking is where I get most of my performance from because the thing just drags so much on the ground. It will get updated eventually, so you can try a version that doesn't scrape. But for now, we got this thing, and it just holds in that really long parabolical corner so much. And then coming down here, I usually have to start braking at about here, but I halved the braking distance and could have even gone a little bit further, as you saw I pulled up a little bit early. Here, I don't take this quite as nicely as I could, so there is time to take off. Actually, that was a lot slower than what I remember. Coming around here, not so bad. Then we're going to miss this apex just a little bit, but we do get a good run out of it. Now, coming through the tunnel, absolutely flooring it down with cross plies, remember? And this thing is still doing rather well. Now, coming down into here, this is always a little bit tricky. Don't know how exactly to break for it. It is a very dynamic and ever-changing instance right there. But now we're going to come down to this flying corner. I would love to take this one at full speed, but you really do have to lift at the very least to get the thing around here. Coming around the swimming pool area, not so bad. Cutting that corner just nicely. Not going to crash here and stop all of the uh, qualifying happening for the people behind me after I set a blistering lap and basically cheat there by blocking the road and then come through the final few corners nice and bumpy and down the start finish line and that time oh my really well with the controller after a couple of minutes we did a 143 and like six attempts and holy cow it is already better than the lotus 78 i was not expecting it to be so fast and effective Ah, uh, I suppose we now put a row above and we put the BT46B in there and transcribe the time 143.703. That is impressive. I, I wasn't particularly trying very hard. As you just saw, it took six attempts, which is really fast. And I did it with a controller. Oh my God. This will be going up on the BeamNG repository, so you guys can try this out yourself. It does take a lot of tuning, and I wish it didn't scrape, but that's kind of unavoidable right now. So, I have already had a bit of experience with this. I don't know why the engine has suddenly decided not to show up. That's a bit weird. We are also going to have an animated fan in there at some point. I'll probably put this up as is, and then do a fixed release of this card at another point in time. But it is getting dangerously... Uh, like, it's nearly 5.30 a.m. I... I really do need to go to sleep. Uh, I can't really uh, put the effort in to fix the scraping at the moment. What I'd really need to do is re-export a version of the car with super solid mm, suspension. I mean, I could just try to strengthen up the suspension manually, but I don't uh, have a lot of experience, or a lot of luck, I should say. Oh god, no! Oh! Oh, that's right, yeah, every time you reset you have to turn that on, so I think that's what I've just said. Uh, yeah, I don't have the... Uh, good fortune of being able to change suspensions, dampening and whatnot, and get the results I would like. 
And the automation exported cars are not really meant to be tampered with, but we will give it our best at some point. But uh, I will release it in its current form, not with this tune, because I don't know how to make tunes default into the uh, vehicle mod itself. But uh, you should really try this out. It's quite fun. Just make sure to turn the uh, Jato rocket on every single time. Whoops, daisies wasn't paying attention. This is quite cool. The idea of like seeing this thing move under revving the engine, which is one of the things that uh, was very uh, special about this when they were talking about this car. They were saying when you'd rev it, you'd see the engine actually move down. And I, uh, the, the vehicle moved down, that is, sorry. It's, it's very late, I'm very tired. I hope you guys have enjoyed this so far because, well, I, I suppose actually that's about it. <laughs> I've had a bunch of fun. I hope you guys have had fun uh, learning all the technical ins and outs. I know that the Beam and G playthrough part hasn't been so much right now. It just drives the way I want it to. It just does really well with the controller. So yeah, uh, remove a lot of front brake force, move the uh, thruster half a meter forwards or 0.5 forwards. And for the most part of it, that's it. This car is really good i just wish oh it didn't scrape so much i get the feeling that this thing would have much better performance if it didn't scrape. oh dear oh no that wasn't meant to happen anyway for now i'll catch you all next time goodbye so i'd like to take this time right now to thank all my channel members for being channel members it is very helpful for you guys to be doing that for me and i very much appreciate it but there is also the special shout out for the very top rich tier for the people that have frivolous amounts of money <laughs> like Ruben. Thank you very much, Ruben. You are a good friend. Also, Ruben is another YouTube content creator. They do automation and BeamNG stuff as well. You can check them out at some point if you uh, want more of this sort of content. Not exactly like mine. They're a little bit more chill than I am. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed. Goodbye.